Mr. President, this is your eighth visit to West Virginia. It's great. It is great. For a state like this that has never seen that type of attention from a sitting president in generations, and some might say it's a bit of an odd relationship, the Appalachian yeah. region, the big city, real estate tycoon, what is it about the people of West Virginia that really resonates with you? It's a strange thing. I just love the people. They're great people. They have a tremendous heart. They've been treated very unfairly. I've always felt they've been treated unfairly. And I brought back the coal industry. I brought back a lot. Look, West Virginia is now booming. West Virginia is doing great. We saw 65% up in coal export this year. It was just announced. And you're just very special. And I came for Patrick Morrissey because I think he's going to be a great senator. We need his vote. And Carol Miller, likewise. And uh, I don't know, I've just developed great friendships to this, uh, this state. And I won by 42 points. And they did me a big favor. And I always do them favors back. It's just been a very good relationship. You talked about coal. 2,500 coal jobs added in the last two years after yeah. years of decline. Yeah. Moving forward, though, for West Virginia to prosper in years to come, it's, it has to be about more than just coal. Is there any policy that you can create? Is there any legislation you can push that will make the quality of life for West Virginians better moving forward beyond coal in the years to come? Well, it is, and it's happening, but I will tell you, coal is just starting. Coal is just beginning. If you look at Asia, they love West Virginia coal. It's a really high-quality coal. Vietnam, the president and prime minister of Vietnam said it's the best coal they've ever used. And uh, coal, so coal itself is going to be very, very big, much bigger than it has been, but it has really taken off. And just economic development generally, it's a great location, it's a great state, it's got hardworking people, and it's doing really well, and you have a really terrific governor, Big Jim Justice. He is a big man, uh, but Jim, uh, Jim Justice has done a fantastic job as governor. I think you're just seeing the beginning of the resurgence, and if you look at the various states, West Virginia is making about the biggest comeback in the whole nation. So maybe that's because I do like it and I do come here, but whatever it is, we'll take it. Your supporters certainly love you. Go to any of your rallies here and, and you'll see that. Uh, and they'll say because you have not let them down on any big issue yet, what you've promised you've delivered on for them. That being said, to be fair, there are people out there who just don't like you. And they believe that your rhetoric is divisive. They believe that some of the things you do maybe are beneath the dignity of the pre presidency. Is there something that you can do? Is there an opportunity there in the next two years of your term to maybe extend an olive branch to them so that the focus of conversations from the water cooler up to the White House can be on what you're doing rather than what you're saying or how you're saying well, it? Well, I agree with you 100%. I mean, part of the problem is we get treated very unfairly by the press, by the media, and, you know, just not correctly, not fairly. So uh, you have have to go uh, you have to be a little bit tougher you have to go around certain ways you have to use social media the way you have to use it in order to get the word out you have to do rallies like we did today this was so successful I mean they're all successful and if we didn't do this and if we didn't talk the way we're talking we'd never get the word out and the bottom line is I guess that's why I became president and now I can do things that normally you wouldn't be able to do but uh, I agree with you hundred percent and I think over a period of time if the press could ever report it the way it is instead of the way they want it, you would see a very big difference. And I think it'll end up happening. Last question. We received some really good economic news today. Yes. And that comes on the heels of good news from manufacturing earlier this week and of the report of the third quarter GDP up again, 3.5%. Right. Right. It's been a wave of good news economically. What can you do moving forward to keep that momentum going? Well, we just want to keep it going. I mean, today we had a tremendous number, despite hurricanes, which absolutely obliterate jobs numbers. In October, it was just announced this morning, 250,000 new jobs in the country. That is a shocking number. Also, 3.7% unemployment, very, very low. I think 50-year type low. And uh, wages going up, the people of West Virginia like that. Not only wages going up, people have a choice of jobs. Yeah. You know, you don't look sort of have to hold on to one job. If you don't like your job, you can go out and you can get another job. So it's really doing well. We're having the best economy probably in the history of our country, so I'm very proud to be a part of it, and that's why I hope the folks in West Virginia, they go out and they vote for Patrick, Patrick Morrissey and Carol Miller, because we're going to keep it going. We need their votes, so we're going to keep it going. Mr. President, thank you for your time.